<coughs> dear, <coughs> dear brothers and sisters, for me, every day that I wake is a reminder that by His grace, I am getting one more day to fulfill my obligations to myself. It is a reminder to me that the universe is not worried about me, nor is God worried about me. The person who is worried about me and my progress is my master. So each morning I wake up, I give thanks to my master. Because had I fulfilled my journey, I don't think I would need to wake up again one morning. It's not necessary. This life is given to us to fulfill our obligation to ourselves. We have come here with a purpose to fulfill for ourselves. I have to come, I have been born to evolve into a situation or a condition or a state of being in which I can no more reside on earth. I cannot reside here again <coughs> once my journey here is fulfilled, unless nature sends me again to go and say, look after my children. So when such a person is sent back here, and his divine command is, go and look after my children. In a sense, there is putra bhav in me. See. My putra bhav starts with my children at home. But as my circle widens, my putra bhav will and must embrace everything, everywhere, all life. So you see, Putra Bhav is not a bad thing. It is bad only when like Dhritarashtra, only his children are, you know, enveloped in that small circle. But when the Putra Bhav is all over the universe, only two people can be said to have that the masters and the master. So don't be afraid because unless you love your children truly, 
in a sense of spiritual growth, spiritual awakening, and the love for them in which you are not only concerned with their material life, but you are much more concerned with their spiritual life and progress. You are not worth the salt that we eat. I have repeated on so many occasions that our spiritual evolution is never only for ourselves. Your children must evolve with you. Your social circle must evolve with you. Are you contributing to the evolution of your friends, of your relatives, of those around you? Or are you just wasting time smoking with them, drinking with them, and criticizing everything in this world? <coughs> it is sad that there are some people who do nothing else but th- throw stones at everything that is good. It is a shameful fact that many of our abhyas indulge in such nonsense, you know, sending out nonsensical emails, vulgar emails, criticizing everything when, be, when they should be looking into themselves and seeing what they are. See, I warn you that such activities are, you are only digging your own grave. Nobody digs your grave or pushes the button on your spiritual elevator except yourself. The hand that can push the elevator button and take you up to infinity is the same hand that can dig your grave. On this auspicious occasion, I wish to remind you that you are the only karta, you are the only builder of anything that you can build in this life. And what can you build in this life? Your spiritual future, which is resplendent, which is full of spiritual bliss in the company of the hierarchy of the great masters. A divine position where you are assured of proximity to them. And of course, as Babaji Maharaj has written in so many of his messages, he says from there, we shall go on to other <laughs> adventures. He calls the spiritual life an adventure. It is an adventure. In an adventure you have fun, you have pleasure, you have danger. Here the danger of life is not from tigers and snakes and lions. The danger is from your own evil in your own heart, which does not permit you to look at the good in others. Babaji Maharaj said, always look for the good in, any, in everything that you see. Don't look for bad. Bad anybody can find. Only those who are evolving can find the good in others. You know, there are people here who will look at a dosa and find a fly in it. They will cut a vadai and look, they will find an insect in it. Was it there before? I don't think so. Their own bitterness, their own ugliness in their heart, it creates badness where they look. Should such people exist? Well, I don't know, nature gives them chance after chance, life after life. Do it, my friend, do it, my friend. You are mine and I want you to come to your divine home. Do you want to be ever through eternity finding flies in dosas, insects in vadais and evil in everything that we see? When are you going to learn to look at the good in others? When are you going to look and say, well, there's a jewel in his heart? Of course, another friend will say, what jewel you have? It's only a small bit of... You say, well, it is not in you, no, then look at him. See, crows fly through our hall. They don't see any danger here. Why? Because in our hearts, we have nothing against crows, nothing against snakes, nothing against anything. See, if there is something happening to me, it's because it has to happen to me to awaken me to the fact 
that dear friend i was waiting here for you to come why did you come you came because you have created a future in yourself in which you had to have this agonizing part of life too nothing comes to us except that which we invite because of our grossness because of our samskaras because of the evil in us that invites only evil like attracts like l a k e attracts l a k e remember therefore drunkards have drunkards as friends thieves have thieves as friends you know and they will always find their own company in which they are happy in which they, they think they are getting rich but the riches of today are gone tomorrow because of their evil habits and then they have to do it again to get more money to get well evil needs wealth riches because it is thrown away a good man doesn't need much money if you follow the tenets of sahaj marg be simple and in tune with nature simplicity simplicity starts with being clean simple clothes you know living in a simple room after all when you are living in a house people come people come to see you and see how your heart invites them or rejects them they are not interested in the pictures and on the wall and you know the uh, frumpery and trumpery that you put on your the display it is you they come to see and if they don't see you but only see your riches and your gold and silver ornaments will they go away happy they will say nay but what about the food served on golden plates you know with uh, what is it called mithai mithai walas who brought from banaras for cooking they will say yaar i didn't go for that i didn't see a welcome welcoming smile on his face i didn't feel welcome and when they wanted to eat it became mud that dashes and by bones do i want to eat this samosa at this kachori no i think because or i thought that because he was very rich you know he would welcome us be generous but the way he looked at me showed that he was not happy even though there was food for 50 people he did not want them then why did you put this food on the table only those who are hypocrites like himself appreciate it because they wink at each other and say why as he is so am i chalo let us eat again like attracts like so beware of life attracting life babuji maharaj once told me in sahaj marg there is no no uh, friendship friends are those who destroy us they introduce you to bad habits not because they are evil because you attract with your evil in your heart those who will put you on the path which you have chosen remember what babuji maharaj has said nature supports you in any activity that you choose for yourself you choose to be a smuggler people who will help you that will come to you whether they are also smugglers or suppliers of good you know or civil officials you will find assistance because that is nature nature helps full stop it doesn't say who you know it is like the power of a motor or an engine 
you yoke it and it runs it's like a horse driving to a carriage it goes where you want it to go not where it wants to all power all nature helps and as the proverb says helps those who help themselves means if i am helping myself it means i choose in this universe of universal possibilities things that will advance my values and reject everything else that does not contribute to my values it's not a question of good and bad remember what i think shakespeare said nothing is good or bad but thinking makes it so if you think it is bad because your mind says it is bad and your mind says it is bad because your evolution does not need it but if you still accept it is your fault don't is fault therefore choose wisely to get that wisdom you must be afraid of the power of choice if there was no power of choice there would be no problem at all <coughs> you know a bullock in a cart has no problem it has no choice it goes where its master wants it to go no were we like that yoke to the master in such a way that we can go only where he wants us to go there's no problem at all where he goes i go but to be able to say that or to even to think it for yourself you must be so firmly yoked to him that there's no other way but if you stay say like you know many intellects do what is the use if i cannot have the freedom of choice the freedom of choice is the most dangerous thing for us because unless you have the wisdom to choose it helps you to condemn yourself to all the bad things no no i am free why do you say it no because i have the freedom of choice i live in a free society i can do what i like yes you can do what you like but does it contribute to your spiritual evolution who bothers about spiritual evolution i will take it up when i am 40 when i am 60 do you know you will till you are 40 you live who knows are we not seeing every day newborn babies die children of 5 6 7 go through the ages and they are dying every day there is no guarantee of how long you are going to live you know you run after money there's an offer which expires at noon tomorrow where in some place don't you run take the fastest you know possibility of getting there put your money all because it there's a promise in sahaj marg there's no promise but there are guarantees what is the guarantee follow and you will be there what have i to do follow whom he is who is there your master follow in what sense obedience if he says sit sit if he says meditate meditate if he says today you are too tired to sleep you sleep you don't argue you don't say master i don't need sleep he knows obedience discipline two things obedience means discipline discipline means obedience i don't know of any third factor which can influence my spiritual life so you see if you are not obedient 
and you say i am disciplined whenever the bell rings in the at 5 o'clock in the morning i see people getting up i am not disciplined i am awake to see them get up but are you getting up no i wait until they finish generosity aha got a wonderful thing you wait till they are finished yes master my nature is like that what about the breakfast oh i am there first when the bell rings why because i must have my breakfast before everything is finished this is not discipline it is selfishness you are utterly selfish you are too lazy to get up and you pretend that you give the others a chance before you to go to the bedroom bathroom isn't it your discipline is only to look after yourself in the only way you think you should like to look after yourself not in the way that the master says look after yourself what does master mean when he says look after yourself they are there in the ten maxims of sahaj mark how many of our abhyasis can recite all the ten maxims even today after 30 years 20 years 15 years as abhyasis no no sir the first one is very difficult what is the first one it says you wake up early the second one sir when i cannot do the first one what is this of remembering the second one isn't it so when we cannot do the first one we stop we don't try to do the first one we never try to get up arise before dawn we don't if we have an alarm we don't hear it if you hear it you put a pillow over it you know and shut it up sunday satsang sir it is the only holiday we have i am trying sir i attend sunday satsang a few times in a year how many times 10 maybe 6 or 7 maybe surely how many surely sir at least 2 or 3 because my wife won't you know she bothers me she troubles me all this because of her at least 2 or 3 i did sat san babaji maharaj has said only those who attend sat san are in my vision i see before me like a television screen in which i can see all those who are regular persons no no sir my master sees everywhere everything will he not see me but babu ji himself has said no discipline all right how often do you meditate at home sir i have children you know i am unable to accept the first maxim i am late i am always late to go to work my children bother me when my wife troubles me there so you see are you committed to yourself sahaj marg does not demand a commitment to your master to the system to attendance nothing it says commit yourself to yourself if you are truly self interested the first thing you will be do is to attend to your spiritual life you will get up not four at three <clears throat> get ready get a bath get meditation so that you are fresh even before your children wake up you have come you are finished your morning commitment so you go like a brief bird you know seeking at dawn you go to work you are ready you are early you are fresh 
your work shows, you know, child of evolution. Because evolution is a total concept. You cannot evolve spiritually and be shoddy in your material life. Because the sense of commitment is pervasive. When I am committed to, my, to myself, I am committed to my work. If I am committed to my work, it is resplendent, it shines. Whatever you are, whether you are a carpenter or a shoemaker or a governor, no humbug, no cheating. Without this commitment to yourself, you are nothing in any field. With this commitment to yourself, you can become everything in every field, which is what divinity is supposed to be. God is not committed to anything. Lord Krishna says in the Gita, I have no duty to perform, nor does the effect of anything that I do reflect on myself. You know, I have no duties. My performance does not leave anything on me, no grossness. That is the divine field of activity in which you do and you do not do, or you do nothing and but you are doing everything. You look, you seem to be asleep, but you are inside you are awake. You know, yoga nidra, that's what it is called. You love, but you, nobody, you know, they can perceive, but it's not something to be seen by, you know, kissing on both cheeks and good morning, good evening, good night, all this politeness, this mockery of courtesy, something in your heart, something in your hand, something on your face, like the smiles of, you know, public hostesses. <laughs> Beware of not being yourself inside as you are outside. I am not saying beware of being something inside which you are not outside, no. Beware of being something outside which you are not inside. Beware of being polite when you are not having polite thoughts in your heart. Beware of appearing friendly when you have enmity in your heart. It is good to be anything if you are inside and outside the same. Try not to be, you know, a thief, a deceiver to yourself. <laughs> because slowly you begin to think that what you are outside, you are also inside. Corruption, increasing corruption. No, no, sir, I am a good man. I have never done harm to anybody. Yes, but what about the millions of people you have harmed? Those are policies. What can I do? These are the most dangerous people who think they are good who think they are always good and are telling us to be good. Be simple and in tune with nature. You must be the same inside as you pretend to be outside. Or to put it in a more spiritual way, your inside and your outside must be perfectly the same. See, we must not pretend. Pretend means I am showing outside something which I am not inside myself. Avoid that hypocrisy. Totally negate it. Don't be afraid of showing your true self. Because after all that is what you are. Then somebody can help you. 
otherwise nobody will help you you are like the man who goes to the doctor and says how are you doctor no no how are you my friend oh i am not it i only came to wish you something inside pushed him to go to the doctor but coming there he is not able to show his insight only is his polite outside he goes back as he came and perhaps in next days or which you record the newspaper you will find his name that awaits those whose hypocrisy denies help to them remember that be simple be simple is very very simple to say it are you are you simple in word in thought in action sahaj bar be simple but it requires courage to be simple it requires courage to be able to say what you have in your heart you know the the most important three words in life i love you the people who say it don't mean it and the people who mean it are too shy to say it because as babuji bada don't to me in one letter i love you but this must not be repeated understand it is like a fire that we light <coughs> you know in india the system is when the bride comes newly wed she brings the fire you know or he takes the fire to the room and that fire is never dampened it's kept low at night by ashes in the morning they blow light it they put more firewood on it at night they dump it to the ashes and through life and at the end of life when the body has to be you know sent back to nature as components the same fire is taken and used for the end of life ceremony one fire throughout life that is our own custom we are what we are and it is not like the braggadocio of humbug which says i am what i am i don't care who sees it it is the humbleness of those who know that whatever they are good but it's not enough they have to move on and to move on here is the path here is the master if you follow him you will go to a destination i pray for all of you thank you you know i have i'm not ashamed to tell you this though i suspect some of you a very few of you know it that without you all i feel lonely yes. even even before the utsav starts i'm thinking of you know yes they are coming for a few days and then they will all leave me you know and i feel very lonely i feel very sad so you can judge the amount of sorrow that accumulates in my life of course i know some of you will say if you want i will stay with you not a question of my wanting you know if i have to call people to be with me that is not a true affection true love so to dispel my loneliness to help me get rid of it i need companions on my spiritual way whose presence i can feel always whether they are or not whether they are there or not 
So remember this. It's no use saying, sir, I want to be with you always. But this but is a terrible thing in every language. I want to help you, but. I want to go for satsang, but. So they add but, but, but and get butter. <laughs> so remember the life of spirituality is a life of loneliness because as you live or as you evolve, you find fewer and fewer companions on the way. So when I started this talk, I told you in Sajman there's no friendship. What can friends do for you? Spend 10 minutes with you? You want eternal companions. So look for them in your spiritual life. Thank <laughs> you.